Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the 1 to 35th scale Lanos Land Battle version from Plum. So if you guys missed the unboxing, you can go back and check that out, but this is not a Bandai kit, but this is from a different company called Plum. This is my first experience building a Plum kit, and I have to say it's very similar to building a Kotobukiya kit, really, for the most part. Um, maybe not quite as finessed as a Kotobukiya kit, or as many Kotobukiya kits can be, from my limited experience with them. But it's going to be similar. It's definitely, it's a lot like building a high-grade kit, uh, but larger kind of, and more detail, and obviously the construction is going to be a little bit different, I mean, the way that uh, some stuff just like is engineered to go together and things like that is of course different from uh, like how Bandai usually tends to do it, but just like the overall construction of this kit, in terms of like its uh, complexity and articulation and things like that, it feels kind of a lot like a 10 year old high grade kit, so if that is any help for you. Overall, as you can see, it's got a lot of really nice detail on there, but straight out of the box, the kit's going to be looking a little bit boring, because it's pretty much all just one color. We have that kind of light gray color for the joints and things like that, but uh, it's overwhelmingly just tan. So I would say you're going to want to at least going to want to put some panel lining on this kit, but uh, probably painting is going to be your best way to go. Uh, like I said, how it's very similar to like a 10-year-old high-grade kit, so it does also come with the kind of negative points of that, so like some of the negative points of this kit are going to be just like it's got a lot of seam lines and the articulation is fine, but not like outstanding. It does, I think, plenty of what you would want it to do. It's not going to be like super duper dynamic, but um, just overall, yeah, that's what you should expect from the kit. So let's give you guys a look at some of that articulation. So first off, here in the head, really like the design of like the mono eye in there. First of all, I love that like kind of like bar going underneath the lower part of that. And then we have kind of like two parts that make up that kind of section there for the cameras. It's like a, the back part and then this front part. So it gives it like some really nice like mechanical depth looking to that instead of just being just a circle on like just like a flat piece of plastic. So that looks really nice. And then we have that little clear part which fits in there for the camera really well. Here's one problem that I'm having with this kit, like some of like the main joints are like these really large uh, ball joints that fit into like poly caps and they pop out quite easily. I mean they hold in there fine but if you're gonna be like moving the kit around and stuff you'll find that they, they can pop out of those ball joints quite easily indeed. So again, just really nice details here around on the head. We do have some different option parts which I'll go over here in a bit. You can use a different head and a different antenna piece for those parts there but the head will go up, if I can not pull that off, up to only about there and down to there. Again, not really a whole lot of range and then of course it can turn side to side. You can actually fit it over the, the shoulder parts. wasn't sure if it would fit over that, but it will. We do have some detail there underneath in the neck piece. Uh, going to the shoulders here, as I just mentioned, they're on ball joints there, but then we have a joint on the other end of that, so you can actually kind of move this whole thing like that. And then forward to about there before it's probably going to start to come out of that joint. So not too bad articulation forward. Of course, seam line here on the top of the shoulder. Seam line all around on this shield part on the side of the arm. That part just fits onto just a peg into plastic. There's no poly cap in there at all. It'd be really easy to put something else in there if you wanted, but the shield part fits in there well enough. But I think you are definitely probably going to want to glue that after painting and doing final assembly and everything. Uh, but then here at the top of the arm, the arm is going to move very similar, again, to like an older high-grade kit rotation there at the top. Just a nice bend here at the elbow, giving you more than 90 degrees, so pretty nice bend there. Again, really nice details all around on this arm guard piece. And then the hand wrist is just on a ball joint. Uh, in the stomach section, it's just going to rotate. That's pretty much it. It's not going to have any stomach crunch or anything. Uh, bending side to side, just rotating there. All the skirts uh, will move. The front and back skirts are quite loose. I feel, but they're just gonna just kind of hang there anyway. Side skirts can also move a little bit, not really a whole lot, but you can move those a bit. So those will move out of the way plenty. Here at the uh, hip, that's just a ball joint here, which is coming out when I move that. Uh, so that will move side to side, it'll move about to there, is about the extent of that, which I feel like is probably enough. You're not gonna get the ankles that wide anyway, so it's okay. Uh, rotation there at the top, let me just pull this off and the arm falls off there too. Rotation here at the top, but this is quite tight here because this is just fitting, it's just a straight peg into a, 
poly cap there, so that fit is quite tight, rotating that around. Bend at the knee is going to give you about that much. That's about it. So not really a whole lot there. Not really even quite 90 degrees. But again, just because of like the way that this mobile suit stands, that's kind of okay. So again, nice uh, cool details here around on the leg. The foot has fallen off, so pop that guy back on there. Again, this is just another one of those large ball joint into poly caps that can fall out quite easily. So again, like I like these details here and like these bars here going around on the back of the legs, all really cool. The toes can all move separately. So like we have just like the, at the main connection can rotate there and then this part, <laughs> that fell off again. Uh, this part, front of the toe can move separately as well like that and it's the same for the back whole thing can move there and then the smaller part can move separately up underneath the foot not really going to be a whole lot of detail they kind of like added some detail up inside there but it's just kind of a big hollow piece for the most part but you're probably just going to have this standing on the ground i imagine anyway going back around here to the backpack these parts here at the top can move separately like that and then these parts here at the bottom can move separately as well. So seam lines on all of that. So we'll have to do a lot of seam line, seam line removal on all that stuff on the backpack as well. But it uh, does move pretty well. Here at the top, I should mention that these are just rotating just on a peg. These here at the bottom are on a ball joint, so you can kind of move the angle of that a little bit as well. As you can see, this whole section here is kind of rotating. I don't really feel like it's really kind of supposed to do that, but you can rotate that a bit anyway. So one thing that I mentioned is option parts. So again, if you saw the unboxing, you saw that this kit is actually the regular player type suit, but then they just added the kind of new parts to make it the land battle version. So from the player type, for the shoulders, we have these kind of, uh, I guess they're supposed to be kind of fuel tanks maybe or something that attach onto the shoulders there. Instead of the shield, you can plug these up onto there which are pretty cool. Here on the side of the leg, instead of these, this like detail part that kind of very just kind of boxy part just stuck onto the side of the leg. You can add these parts here, which will go on there like that. Those have some nice detail up underneath there as well, like that. I feel like this piece doesn't actually go in all the way. I think that's supposed that's how it's supposed to be kind of, but it looks like it's not plugged in all the way. But that's as far as I can press it, so I don't know. We'd probably want to just modify that, maybe just cut the peg a little bit shorter so you can push that in farther. Anyway, and then for the head, a couple of option parts here, just a longer antenna if you wanted that on the top of the head or this more flat part for the top if you don't like this kind of like bulbous part of the head you can make it more flat it's kind of a little bit more of like a graze kind of look to that I can guess I can just show you quickly so yeah it's gonna give the head definitely a different look to that I kind of prefer this one so I, I, I may end up actually just using this part instead of the one that it's supposed to have so I kind of like this one better I think and then as you can see on the kit, it has its just closed fists, but then it does also have a couple different hands. It has a open hand, nice big open hand for the left side. And then for the right side, it has a trigger finger hand, which I have here attached onto its uh, rifle cannon, I guess this is. It's supposed to be gray. Again, you are going to have to do some painting on this kit. So this is just uh, pretty simple. It's just two parts snapped together and then one part for the barrel there. But it has a pretty cool look, very heavy duty look to this and the way that this fits into the hand it does have a peg but as you can see it's not really good uh, you can see it has a peg there on the side of the handle and here on the hand it has this little section here where that's supposed to fit inside there so you're supposed to be able to get that nice into that little section there and then close that up with the thumb and it doesn't really stay in there too well so you kinda have to like just set it in there in just the right way and like that but this is why I like swappable hands instead of articulated hands is because after you paint this you can just just glue this into that hand permanently because you're not going to ever use that trigger finger hand for anything else you just glue that in there and then that'll hold that perfectly fine and then when you want to actually have that in hand which you probably will you just change off the hand right so for a size comparison here, I'll compare this here to the HGUC Yakadoga kit. Now that's a 1144 scale kit and as you can see it's it's generally it's about the same height as that but one thing you have to remember the Yakadoga is kind of a little bit larger mobile suit. So in terms of like the overall height of the Leonos kit, it's going to be about the same height as like a larger 1144 scale kit. Uh, but it's much bulkier obviously and if you're going to be like wanting to use weapons like some Gundam 
kit weapons that you want to give to this or something like that. Probably one 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 hundred scale is going to be the right size. In terms of the hands, the hands of the Lanos are definitely large and they're definitely going to be more suited like for one 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 hundred scale weapons if you're going to be using that trigger finger hand. Uh, so it's kind of an odd scale. It's somewhere kind of between one forty four and one one hundred if you're going to be kind of kit bashing it with anything Gundam related, I suppose. All right. So as I said in the unboxing, I feel like these kits are definitely more tailored for like people with more modeling experience I think they're not really like on the level of like Bandai's kits especially like the high grade and master grade line right where the kits are made to just like look really good very colorful and like really good articulation everything like that just all out of the box with minimal work to them uh, this kit's gonna take a little bit more work a little more finesse to really make it look good that's not to say that you know even if you don't paint or anything that you you're not allowed to buy the kit and enjoy it I think you'll you'll still have a pretty cool looking kit, uh, whatever you do, because it's just a cool looking design, I think. But definitely going to look much, much better after you know going in and putting in some of the work on just removing some of the seam lines, painting, uh, filling in all of those nice little details, panel lining, and uh, painting, of course. Weathering, sorry, I said painting twice, I meant weathering. Uh, probably, this is going to be a kit that just, it, it already looks so much like tank-like. I think you're definitely probably going to want to apply some kind of tank style painting and weathering techniques to this is going to look pretty cool. And again, it's 1 to 35th scale, so uh, you probably have a lot more room to run in terms of the weathering for this just because the scale is smaller. You don't like wear on a Gundam. You have to, you don't have to, but it's kind of, the weathering looks better as small as you can make it because it's a very small representation of a very huge machine. This, These are around, I think, five, five and a half meters tall, something like that. So I think you don't have to worry about your weathering being quite as small as on a Gumpla kiss. So anyway, I think there's a, a lot of room to have fun with it. And unfortunately, just due to like the bulk of that uh, we weapon, the rifle, cannon, whatever it's called, I suppose, the bulk of that at the end, it's kind of hard to get that up under the arm there. So as far as doing like a straight on firing pose might be a little bit hard. I mean, of course, you could build it, of course, into some diorama or something where the angle is different or this, you can modify it. Of course, there's a lot of things that you can do. But again, I'm just talking about just straight out of the box here. A little bit kind of tricky to get it into a firing pose and the joint of the shoulder is holding it for now. But again, like I said, you might want to do something to strengthen those uh, ball joints if you are planning to have it in a pose for a long time. Or again, you know, just, just fix the pose permanently. Uh, but... Overall, happy with this kit. Uh, I think it's a little bit expensive, so it's definitely going to be something I think that you're definitely going to want to really know what you're getting into and really like the design if you want to pick one up. I think they're around $55, $60, somewhere around there, so definitely a little bit more expensive. Uh, I really like it, though. I'll probably at some point end up getting the other, just the uh, player-type version as well at some point if it's ever like on sale on Hobby Link Japan or something like that. Uh, a little bit cheaper, I'll maybe pick one up because I really like the weapon of that one too and it's uh, just got a little bit different look the different parts on it so that's pretty much it guys for this review hopefully that's been helpful, interesting to look at something different aside from Gumpla for a change so I also should just mention quickly just for the sake of being fair I did put some tack on the hand so it's holding the rifle like I said it's a little bit hard to hold that so I just for the sake of the review and just so you guys could see a little bit better what it actually can do, just put a little tack in the hand there to help that out. Again, I would recommend just gluing it after you've painted. So again guys, thanks for all your comments, questions, everything down below, and thank you for watching. See you guys later. Bye bye!